All right, folks. Well, look who we have found. That's right. It's Tyler. And sir, your character in the game is Iron Ripper. That's right. And the awesome guild that you are in, Oathsworn. That's right. Representing for the Oathsworn here today, folks. Awesome, awesome guild. And you have an exclusive right here, right now. Get to share with the folks out there. Go for it, sir. All right. Um. Well, first off, the Oathsworn is doing a massive scale event on the server for both Alliance and Horde. It's going to kind of lead into the pre-patch for the Broken Shore. Um, so the whole background of the story is uh, cultists from an unknown cult have gone around the world and have started taking relics and powerful items away from different uh, factions like the Archer Crusade, the Knights of the Even Blade, the Alliance, the Horde, the Kieran Tor. They've all lost these artifacts and currently the Oathsworn, along with their many allies, are trying to reclaim them and keep them safe. Now, with the expansion coming out, there's going to be problems with racial ties. The Oathsworn is a neutral guild. It does both the Horde and Alliance. So the first bit of news is the Horde side guild version of the Oathsworn is actually going to break away. What? Create their own little sister guild. And we're going to be kind of doing the same idea of what the Oathsworn are doing, going around, protecting the world, saving it. But we're going to be doing it a little bit more Horde style. See, the Oathsworn, they don't like when you take the heads off of things and put them <laughs> on banners. Or, for whatever reason, they don't have enough spikes on their hold. Yeah, what? what's up with that? I, now, what's the name of this awesome new Horde guild going uh, to be called, The sir? new guild will be named the Bloodsworn Battleguard. It'll be led by both myself, Ripshaw, Iron Ripper, and Atway, who is a troll priest. She's been involved with the guild for a very long time now. We're both really excited about it. Um, and if you know who Falkvar is from the Oathsworn Alliance side, the giant Vikral, he's actually going to be joining us. He's going to be coming over to the Horde side, and he is going to be playing Bossather, who is an old uh, war veteran from the uh, Warsong clan. So we're very super excited about that. Um, the first part of the story is going to be us all moving to Northrend to try and find this cult to see what's going on. And the Horde side, uh, our first major campaign is going to involve the Nerubians. Uh, what's going to happen is somehow the Nerubians feel like they're, the, the cult is encroaching on their land. They're trying to steal the relics that the Nerubians have from the old gods. Well, of course, that's going to have negative side effects. Not only are the cult trying to get old god relics, but the Nerubians are now pissed off at everyone that someone's trying to go into their lair. So we're going to go in there. We're going to stop the Nerubians from trying to kill everyone, and also try to get these relics back and in safe hands. Um, which kind of leads us into the next bit of news. The Oathsworn, as old as it is, is going to be breaking off. It's going to uh, disband. We're going to have a bunch of different new guilds and new alliances start off at the end of this expansion, right before the Broken Shore. And we want the server, both Alliance and Horde, to get involved in this. Um, it's just going to be a massive event. We're, we're going to be going around the world. We're, we're going to try to incorporate all the zones of the world, try to get everyone involved in this. And at the end, it's going to lead to the Broken Shore. Something big's going to happen to the guild, and it's just going to disband. And they're going to have a bunch of guilds to shoot off from the Horde and Alliance Guild, depending on what happens. Um, now, sir, if somebody wants to participate in this, who do they contact, sir? Uh, that's actually what I was going to get to, and I couldn't remember. Uh, you have to talk to either myself, uh, my in-game name is Iron Ripper, spelled exactly how it sounds, or Atway, uh, A-T-W-E. Um, but Alliance side, if you don't already know who they are, uh, there's Enelore, uh, who Turwinkle's probably going to have the name spelled out, <laughs> Silver Dawn, uh, Jekka, and Rin. I don't remember her full name. <laughs> Um, but if you want to get involved, message any of us, and we will be more than happy to invite you to the events. Um, outside of just the Nerubian event leading up to it, we're also going to have some minor events involving an arena. So, I mean, that's as hard as it can get, fighting. <laughs> right. Excellent. And when will this all begin, sir? Uh, well, our first Court of Honor, when the Horde Guild separates from the Alliance Guild, starts next weekend. So I invite everyone on the Horde side to come and join us for that. Uh, and then after that, our first campaign with the Nerubians starts in December. It's going to be December 1st for the Alliance Guild. I believe it's somewhere around the same time. And will most of this information be posted in the forums? 
Uh, yes. Oh, we excellent. We'll be having someone posted in the WoW uh, Wormrest forums so we can get people out there. Oh, great. Well, wonderful and wow, some exciting news coming up for the Osworn. Excellent. And so, folks, up next, we're going to be talking to the one, the only, Brian Wilson. So we'll be right back with that. Well, hi, ho, folks. And here we are, our Conclave representative, newly appointed officer. Hopefully he stays so after this interview. Uh, it's, Brian, it's Brian Wilson. So, sir, who do you play in the game? I play uh, Wilson, human rogue. Awesome. And now, how long have you been in the Conclave, sir? I joined back in June. All right, and so representing for not only Chryson and Filton and the whole group, what is the latest and the greatest with the Conclave, sir? Well, we are finally finishing our two-month campaign <laughs> on Draenor. Um, it has consisted of two parts, the first of which being a uh, one-month military uh, engagement in Talador. Um, in which we helped liberate the Dranic people of um, demons and some fell corruption of the land. And then the next part, the next half of it, um, has dealt with uh, the, this uh, rogue lege legion, not of demons, this rogue legion of humans known as the Azure Pride, ah. uh, who have been um, essentially uh, hunting orcs on their own, um, stealing the weapons which we were given from, from the training people, okay. posing as us. So <laughs> we've had to uh, rectify that situation. <laughs> Fix that situation. Yes. Uh, and I'm sure that was all diplomatic and there was no, no fighting. In, oh, in, in, no. No. Right? No fighting at all. <laughs> now, sir, you have some great news uh, for your character in game coming up next month, sir. Yes, uh, it's it's some big news. Um, so my character is getting married. Um, it's going to be a big wedding. We're planning for a big wedding. Uh, he is marrying uh, Vanifica, Lady Vanifica. Ah. Yes, uh, it should be a, like I said, it should be a big wedding. We are looking to have it in um, Gilneas Cathedral. And we will be extending myriad invitations, not just, of course, our own guild mates and our sister guild mates, but also, uh, you know, heads of houses and guilds um, with whom we wish to build diplomatic ties or oh. have diplomatic ties. Excellent. Well, Turwinkle's going to be going to that, folks, so hopefully we'll be able to bring that episode to you so all of you folks in the WoW community will have the opportunity to see this awesome wedding. Now, how did you guys, how did your characters meet in game, sir? It was the first, it, it really honestly was like the first day that I was in in the Conclave, <laughs> and you know, she, she, she walked in, she walked in command and winked. That's actually ah, how it started. Wow. Yeah, and wow. Then, and then we went out for drinks. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Love at first sight. It, it, it really was. Excellent. And how long have, has this relationship been going? Um, you know, it, it was really an intelligence gathering thing on her behalf for, <laughs> for, for the first three weeks or of so. Of course, sure. Um, and then we just bonded as friends. Um, you know, in game, and then it just really kind of blossomed from there. Um, we have since adopted one of our guildmates, uh, the uh, the uh, ineffably whimsical and dark gnome um, Xylene. Okay. <laughs> uh, as our in-game daughter. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, she's she's an amazing role player. Um, so we have this family that we're growing. As Great. Well. Now, sir, before we let you go, how can someone get involved in the role play with the Conclave? Uh, we do have our um, we have our application process, conclave.shifter.com. So please, you know, go check it out. You can approach any of us, uh, you know, myself, Tyson, uh, uh, Miller, um, Monet. That's right, folks. 
Check it out. There's an episode about Turwinkle Talks with the Conclave. You'll find out all the information on that awesome guild. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Philip Bandarian. What I actually, um, he has interest in Zone of Highland, which, of course, features Malfarian Slayer. And that is a person of some interest to Turathion. So, if you were to Don't expect him to look the way that he looked before. So what do you want to do? Oh, I can't hear you. I don't. Maybe I'll turn this mic right here. Uh, clearly, I have bought at least one judge. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andrew Mac. I'm Andrew Mac. Me. I'm uh, currently trapped in Salt Lake City. Please don't send me back. <laughs> and what do you want to do today? I'm going to roll my own. Today. Okay. What do you want to do? What can tell us what kind of character it is? Tell us what kind of character. So we can tell us what kind of character it is. So okay, we can. Okay. Sure. Um, well, I have the idea. Of, I mean, you guys have been hearing people roaring and screaming at you all night. I thought you would enjoy hearing something a little bit different. So, no, I'm not going to sing. <laughs> a singing that, creature. That's something nobody's prepared for. Uh, Illidan is, but that, go ahead. Uh, yeah. But uh, what I want to do is I want to do something a little quieter, a little, a little more intelligent sounding. Great. So I'm going to try to do like a, a sorcerer, but picture him as a spider wearing robes, kind of tall, elongated, a little taller. A, a tall spider with robes. So what he's going to do is he is scuttling around his library. You know, he's, getting, he's got arms, so he's going to be freaking himself. He's looking for a scroll, he finds a scroll, he puts it down, and he starts to cast a spell, okay. invoking dark powers. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. We'll start the 30 seconds for the first one. Let's see what we got here. Let's throw the mic so we can hear you. Advantage of the noise floor in here. Yeah. You use something subtle, it's really hard. Yeah. On your second take, it's close to count on that mic so we can hear you better. I can bring it higher. Okay, yeah. great. All right, do you have any, any real quick thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're using some interesting uh, uh, vocalizations there with, uh, I think it's, it's sort of your, your soft palate is, uh, is going along there yeah. while you're doing sort of an adenoid voice along with it. Um, my, my only thought is that uh, uh, the description of, of the creature in the story was very specific, really great, uh, but I didn't get the, uh, it, it didn't sound as spidery to me, it sounded more snake-like. And also I, I didn't feel that it was, it, it sounded like it started doing some sort of an incantation, but that just kept going until it finally built into a bigger one. I didn't hear it establishing itself scuttling over, as you said, getting something down, bringing it back, and then finishing it. Okay. Uh, so I, I wanted those beats established. It's a great specific story, don't get me wrong, but I wanted I to hear I just that. need to tell it. Yes. Yeah. Great. With your voice, with, with the vocalization. Yeah. One more time, keep it tight on the mic so we can hear you. Oh, go ahead, Fred. Yes, is, is he, has he got a spider mouth? Has he got like that kind of a... Yeah. Try to play around with that concept, too. I think you can do it. Yeah, great, great, great. Here we go. This yeah. is uh, Andrew, take two. Here we go. On the mic, on the mic. <sighs> making that sound so we can hear you.
Diane, let's have Diane Rose come up. Diane Rose, you here? Any Diane? And good morning. Uh, it is Sunday, the day after BlizzCon is over. Boy, let me tell you, so much fun, and, and we just have so many people to thank. First and foremost, I'd like to thank Tarkanis for being such a fun guy to hang out with. We have laughed from, oh, bus is going from the other hotel, but we have laughed uh, since we got here and haven't stopped since, and, and it's just been and a joy uh, to hang out and, and talk and, and vlog and, and walk around the con. And we've really just enjoyed everything. Uh, I'd also like to say thank Dravi, say thank you to Dravi, who has done just a fantastic job behind the scenes, uh, pointing us this way and that. And, you know, she's been such a big support and a big part of everything we've done. And without her, we wouldn't be here right now. Uh, a huge, huge thank you to my wife. Boy, hon, you know, without you, of course, none of this would have even been possible. The podcast, anything like that, because without your support, I wouldn't be doing any of it. And so, you know, without your love and you being behind me, I wouldn't be here. So thank you so much, hon. To Kravok, again, so fun to hang out with. He's been just a, a blast. and and getting to meet him and, and seeing him succeed on that stage and and we're keeping our fingers crossed for uh, Monday that he gets that first place prize and to everybody that we've met to Marie Peters uh, Roe Will Derringer the decrit crew Heather uh, of course Juno Wow uh, June and Ryan uh, all those folks that I had the awesome opportunity to speak with and talk to those folks that walked up and, and uh, shook our hand and, and were so appreciative of us representing for role players. You know, thank you guys. Uh, this is all for the community and for you guys. And we want to just thank each and every one of you for being there, for supporting us through all that we do. Uh, Tark and I are going to be doing uh, some stuff here today. We're not sure quite what we're going to do. Um, but we will share that with you as we go along today. It's been just a real relaxed day, trying to catch up on a little bit of sleep and, and because last night was so crazy, uh, the parties and everything going on. And so today is just kind of a chilled and relaxed day and you need that in your vacation. You need one day to kind of rest and recoup. Um, so we'll see what we end up doing. Tark's upstairs taking a shower and like I said, we've just been enjoying the morning, tweeting and and saying goodbye to a lot of awesome, awesome folks. So folks, uh, when we come back, we'll see where we're going to head and, and uh, take it from there. It's just kind of a wild adventure today. As we fly down the freeway here, sir, um, what are your thoughts on public transportation in California? Excellent. Excellent point. I think that, uh, you know, more public transportation would cause a lot less congestion on the freeways. Um, and so, in future ret retrospect, um, how would you design these freeways to incorporate this kind of traffic? Right, right. You know, I think adding another lane would only contribute to the problem that we see here right now. So, uh, excellent points all around and good discussion. This has been, you know, Freeway Talk with Justin and John. Wow. Look at how many cars wow. showed up. Something went down, sir. Something went down in funky oh, town. No oh, good lord. They're getting ahead of us, sir. Get on them. 
That's right, folks. We're we're in pursuit. We will we'll fill you in. This is Action Four News with Justin Mater. Riveting stuff, sir. Riveting stuff. On this episode of Cops. Bad boys, bad boys. boys what you gonna do? <laughs> what they gonna do when they get get you? Come for you. Oh, oh. This episode of Cops is filmed Film on what? location with the men and women of law enforcement. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty. In a court of law. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Tark's been on the force for 23 years. Uh, he's seen a lot of stuff go down. Uh, how do you deal with most situations, sir? Uh, by uh, sitting in the car and um, having a smoke. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. You heard it here, folks. An effective deterrent against crime. <laughs> no, they. <laughs> You're fine, can't see sir. The road. I gotta see the rocks, sir. If you could please, please keep it straight. This is a, a fun hill we're tobogganing down here. I'll, I'll catch the car one before, right before it hits us head on around the corner. Because he's passing someone. And then, I'm passing someone? What no, are no, you? no. When someone's. You know, oh. they're gonna hit us head oh, on. Yeah. We're not hitting them head on. I'm like, who the heck? I'm not passing yeah, this anybody like on the, this road. It's gonna be that. Russian uh, dash cam. Oh, with all those crazy Crash. cars <laughs> and drivers? Yeah, you know, holy crap. So, so many people to thank, uh, especially uh, this man right here, made it all possible and really, you know, is, is the best man a, a guy could call friend. You know, we've been through a lot of stuff over this past six days and, well, <laughs> so, I'm not dying. Oh, oh, <laughs> good Lord. All right. Well. Again, folks, it has been a lot of fun, and I can't wait to show you all the stuff I've got. And, you know, pales in comparison to the Vlogmaster, but <laughs> we'll do the best we can. We will see you back home, folks, and until then, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.